Hello and welcome to the video for Wednesday, October 7th. This is After Effects. Hello? Hello. How are you guys doing today? Good, how are you? Good, good. Good. Enjoying the uh, usually too hot weather? The October sun. Yeah. You guys notice getting getting a little cooler, like at night and stuff? Yeah, yeah. there's uh, some leaves actually falling on the ground near me. Wow. I know. <laughs> I've never heard of leaves in Tucson. No, I'm just kidding. Um, yeah. It's kind of sad that we don't have seasons, especially when you see how beautiful it is back east and everything. Are any of you guys from back east? Yeah, I'm from Ohio. Yeah, do you miss the changing seasons? Uh, no, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You don't mean, in other words, you don't miss the cold. Yeah, it gets way too cold. It's too much. Spike says, when I was in Houston, I was legitimately surprised to learn the grass was real. That is pretty cool. Like Houston has real grass. Jackson's from New York. Oh yeah. I actually picked up one of the blades and turned my mom and says, it's not real. It says right here, made in Taiwan. <laughs> uh, let's see. So Jacob says I'm Native American. So all I know is dry, desolate desert. Wow. Yeah, dry, desolate desert is definitely what we all have in common at this point. Um, which, you know, I I grew up here, so I know what, I'm familiar with the Tucson landscape, but, you know, uh, there are some different um, landscapes that I do prefer, especially ones with trees and life. <laughs> um, but, you know, I, I have come to appreciate and love the desert. And you guys like the landscape out here, the cacti and the mountains and all that kind of stuff? Kind of, maybe, no. Okay. Well, yeah, I think it's pretty cool. Um, uh, of course, it's nice when you can take vacations to places like Colorado where it's gorgeous or even Oregon uh, and then quickly leave before the winter comes. <laughs> I never really experienced out here. I never really camped out at Mount Lemmon or anything like that to experience the foresty tree area and the snakes and bears and, and all that. <laughs> You're missing out, man. The snakes and bears are what it's all about. Yeah. I camped yeah. out uh, last weekend at Madeira Canyon, and we saw coyotes, deer, roadrunner, and turkeys. I see coyotes and roadrunners all the time in alleyways. Yeah. Yeah. Or in well, the washes. That's true. I mean, they're everywhere. Let's see. Rachel says she's from Kansas City, so it's very different from what she's used to. Gabriel likes Madeira Canyon. He used to stay in those A cabins. Oh, you did? You stayed in those cabins? Uh, we looked at the price of those. Those are like $150 a night to rent a cabin at Madeira Canyon. And I know it sounds like a lot of money, but when you think about like the cost for a hotel room, uh, you know, it's probably pretty similar to a quasi decent hotel room in a, in a big city. Um, or actually, it's probably a lot cheaper than that. But, um, you know, if you save up a little money, it might be worth it. Go spend a night in a cabin in Madeira Canyon. That's pretty cool. Um, all right. Well, let me put you guys in the, uh, let's see. He says uh, it was back in 06 and it was like $65 a night. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, it's definitely gone up, sir. Um, all right. Let me put you guys in the attendance, which is here. Just gonna put you in and then we'll be good to go. All right, tennis tracking. And After Effects. And yeah, I would like uh, an untoxic cabin fever going on. What is the untoxic cabin fever? Uh, from the movie Cabin Fever, it was oh, oh when okay. they went, they went for a vacation and 
it got all toxic and it was because there was like spreading a new virus or something like that. Oh, yeah. Was on. Oh, I was like, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you definitely don't want that. But, yeah. Okay, well, let me see what we're uh, up to today. Pmagic.com. So, After Effects. Okay. So, let's see. Go down here. Uh, okay. Um, so, first of all, let me check in with you guys. Did anybody get a chance to work on uh, Project 2 and maybe make an animatic or make some sort of a first draft or something we can check out? Uh, Resounding new. Mine, <laughs> we watched mine a while ago, so that's where that's at. Okay, so yours is yours is where? We watched that a while ago. Oh, like, okay. the okay. animatic. So we're good on that. All right, still working on that. Uh, let's see. I uh, already did my animatics. Still working on Project Two. My presentation both due next week. Okay. Um, so have Gabriel? Have we seen your animatic? Oh, we have. Okay. All right. So we've seen two animatics and we have some more due from you guys. Okay. So I'll give you some time today to work on your animatics. Um, the good news about doing an animatic is it, it basically gets your project uh, way down the line. It helps you finish your project. If you put an animatic together, you're not that far away from finishing a final project because you've got a lot of the content in there already. Um, okay. So, but let's go to the class website. Let me share my screen here. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to do a couple tutorials today. Then I'll give you guys some time to work on your animatics and or your final projects. Um, and the first one is going to be animate a title reveal. So let's click on that. And um, let's see. Uh, you'll need to scroll down on this one a little bit. Usually the, the files are right up there at the top, but you have to scroll down a little bit and click this Get Files button. And uh, I'm hoping that downloaded something. Yep. So then open that up. There should be a folder called Title Reveal. And open up the titlereveal.aep folder, or file, I should say. And uh, that's going to look like this. Uh, now, if we play this, you'll see these different things happening. Um, what they're doing here is, uh, you know, they built this kind of animation in steps. And there's different videos that show you how to do these different things, like how to make the lines appear and how to make it look like the little blue flowers are growing up and stuff. But we're, gonna, we're not going to do that today because it's already done. We're going to do something a little different. Um, so it says, okay, let's see. Let me get this out of here. Close this. Okay, so this one, this one actually, uh, I don't think it has a video. We just have to actually read what it is they want us to do on this one. So it says, uh, let me go back up to the top. It says, starting with a layered title design created in Adobe Illustrator, Apply track mats in Adobe After Effects to gradually reveal portions of the design over time. We've already applied a reveal on the horizontal branch. Um, so select the vertical branch layer and create a new solid layer that will hide everything. Okay, so in other words, um, if we go back to After Effects uh, and we grab this playback head and sort of drag it slowly to the right, this is what you would call a reveal. In other words, that line is probably already there, and there's just like some block on top of it that's slowly being pushed to the right uh, to reveal it. And so we're, we're revealing that line on the right. Uh, a little further down, we're revealing the a line on the on the left. I'm sorry, we're revealing the line on the left. A little further down, we're revealing a line on the right, and we're also revealing these blue. Um, you know, leaves. So everything there is being is being revealed. Um, okay, so but what they're saying is, um, let's see, uh, they've already revealed the horizontal branch. So select the vertical branch layer, create a new solid layer that will hide everything. Okay, so a new layer solid. Um, 
that is going to be 250 by 860. Okay, so what we want to do is um, go to After Effects, click on the vertical branch layer, go up to Layer, drop down, and then click on New, and then come over here to Solid. Uh, now, you can, you can call it whatever you want. Uh, I think theirs is called Blue Solid, so we'll call it that. And you can click on this little color chip here and turn that to a blue color just so it looks like their, um, their thing there. Now, um, also, I want to say it was 260 by 800. Does that sound right? Uh, 250 by 860. I wasn't even close. Okay, 250 by 860 are the dimensions that we want to make this uh, layer solid. Um, and then just go ahead and let's see what else they tell us to do. So make the layer solid. Okay, we just make it and then we hit OK. All right, now what happens is this layer solid gets created and it's, you know, this big uh, vertical column. But because it's below certain things, like because it's below this word naturalist and, and a white block behind it, it looks like it's cut in half, but it's actually just one tall column there, right? Okay, so now that we've got it, it says um, set a position keyframe for the solid at two seconds. Okay, so what we want to do is go to After Effects and we want to go to two seconds. Now you can do that by uh, clicking on your playback head and dragging down here to the 200F. Or uh, a quick way to do it is just click on your blue numbers over here and just put in 200 and hit enter and that equals two seconds, right? Now they want us to set a position keyframe. So while this layer is selected, um, hit the letter P as in position. And then come down here and click on the stopwatch next to uh, to the left of position to set the position keyframe. Okay. Um, at the start of the timeline, reposition the solid above the top stem. Okay. So what we have to do is, this is what I like to call backwards animation. In backwards animation, what you do is you go down the timeline and you set a, a position keyframe where you want something to end up. Right? Sometimes it's easier to put something where you want it to end up. Then you go back in time towards the beginning of the timeline. And, and at the beginning of the timeline, you move the object where you want it to start. And then over that course of time, it moves to the position you wanted it to move at. Well, so now what we're going to do is grab our playback head and go back to the beginning of the timeline. We're going to click on this blue um, uh, solid here. We're going to start to move it straight up. And then as soon as we start moving it, we're going to hold our shift key down. And what we're going to do is we're going to drag it all the way up so that it goes above the blue line here. Okay, I'm sorry, the black line. So in other words, the vertical branch is the little like upside down piece symbol that's at, at the top. There's one at the bottom too. You want to drag the blue layer solid up above the, the, the little branch there. Okay. Um, all right. So the next thing we want to do... Um, is set the vertical branch layer to use the solid above it as an alpha mat. Now, an alpha mat basically uh, it, it makes uh, it makes that layer transparent. Um, let me let me. It's easier probably to show you than to talk about, it, right? So what we want to do is we want to go down here and click on the vertical branch layer uh, right here in the center column where it says track mat. We want to click on the none drop down and change it to uh, alpha mat blue solid. Now, when you do that, what happens is an alpha mat is like a mask. It's an invisible mask um, that is a window. Remember, a mask is a window, right? And we can make masks with our shape tool, but we can also make them, you know, we, could, we can create solid shapes and turn them into masks by turning them into alpha mats. So, Essentially, what we have right now, let me, let me turn this uh, back to no track mat right here. Uh, oh, when I did that, it didn't show up. So that's a drag. I guess I'll, I'll go back to alpha mat. Um, so anyway, there's a blue box up there. And it is being animated down to its original position. 
Well, when we, when we apply the alpha mat to it, it becomes a mask and it becomes transparent and it only shows, as it moves, it only shows what is inside the mask, inside the shape, the rectangular shape. So you can see that it's here, it's hidden, but as it moves, as it moves down the page, it's revealing that um, vertical branch, which is already there. In other words, it becomes hidden. The, the alpha mask, you know, because it's a window, it only shows through, you know, the layers underneath it, what is inside the window, which is that rectangular shape. So we only see this stuff as the rectangle moves over it, as the window brings it into view, right? Um, okay, so that is how we are using the layer solid to make a reveal of those uh, branches. Now let's see what else we can do here. Um, it says the blue leaves already have a reveal applied. So shift select the two green leaf layers and pre-compose them. Now we haven't done a lot of pre-composing, but um, this will this will help kind of demonstrate that technique. So um, let's see, it doesn't tell us what to call them. Uh, so I guess we'll just call them leaves. So what you want to do is uh, find your green leaf layer green leaf one and green leaf two and hold down your shift key and click on both of them okay so they're both selected now um right click on that and come over here and click pre-compose and for the new composition name let's just name it leaves now what is what is pre-composing pre-composing is where you take you know multiple elements and you you select them and then you right click and say pre-compose and what it does is it it takes all those elements and it puts them together into their own little composition now an equivalent might be if you're using photoshop and you want to take a bunch of stuff and put it into a layer uh i'm sorry into into a folder uh like let's say you have a bunch of stuff on different layers in photoshop and you want to take all those layers and put them into a folder pre-composing is like that because you're taking everything and you're putting it inside one kind of folder, in this case, a pre-comp, and then you can do things which specifically apply only to that group of things. Like you can apply an adjustment layer to them, or you can you know, uh, adjust the hue saturation of everything that's in that folder, right? Okay, so go ahead and name this leaves and just hit okay. So now so what you're, happens- So you're essentially group, grouping them. Yeah, it's essentially like uh -huh. grouping them together into a layer, right? Okay. But you can, but notice what happens down here. Um, instead of instead of showing them as individual layers anymore, now what we see is this uh, comp icon, which means they're they're their own composition. So if I were to double click on this, it would it would open up just that composition, almost like just that folder that has the leaves in it, right? And then I could go back to the main composition by clicking on uh, the comp window here. Let's see, how do I get back to that? Oh, uh, title reveal. I click on the name of the main composition and it takes me back there. Okay, so let's see what happens next. Um, okay, now we've made a, we've made a pre-comp. Uh, now it says duplicate, duplicate the pre-comp layer. To tell them apart, right click the upper one and choose rename. Uh, okay, great, so we'll do that. So what we're gonna do is um, you've made a pre-comp, which is called leaves. Make sure it's selected. Hold down your command key on the Mac, the control key on the PC, and hit the letter D for duplicate. Okay, now it's going to make a brand new layer. Uh, click on the on the area, the, the name of that uh, layer over here, and then hit your return key or your enter key. And just call this like leaves 2 or something like that. So now we have two layers, two compositions. So those, the two leaves are, were on separate layers. We can, we pre-compose them into one composition and then we duplicated that. So now we've got two compositions that each have two leaves on them, one on top of the other. Okay. Um, now it says at two seconds, set a scale keyframe option for it. So right now we're talking about the very uh, the very top one of the two leaf uh, compositions. So make sure you're on leaves two. Go to two seconds. Once again, you can click on your blue numbers and type 200 in. Uh, hit the letter S 
as in scale to open up your scale option and then click on the uh, stopwatch to set a scale keyframe there. Um, now, it says at the start of the timeline, scale it down to 100 to 0%. So in other words, by setting a scale keyframe here, we locked it in at 100% at two seconds. But if we grab that playback head and drag it back to the beginning of the timeline and set the scale to zero, that means over those two seconds, it's going to scale from zero to 100%, giving the perception that that leaf is just kind of, you know, growing or expanding. So let's see what that looks like. So we go back to After Effects. We grab our playback head, and you can see that the scale is 100% right now, right? Uh, we grab the playback head, we drag it back to the beginning, click on either one of these scale numbers, either one of the 100s, because there's a chain link that's turned on, which means they're linked together. Type in zero and hit enter. Okay, now we can't really see it because there's two sets of leaves on top of each other. Uh, but that, that first set of leaves got really small. In fact, if I turn off the eyeball for the second set of leaves, and you could try that too. Turn off the eyeball on the layer called just leaves. Now grab your playback head and, okay, and drag it over uh, from zero to two seconds. And at about one second, you'll start to see the leaves kind of grow into place. In other words, they're going to scale up to 100%. Okay, now turn on your eyeball again for the uh, leaves layer because I'm not sure what they want us to do with that just yet. Okay, uh, now it says set the original green leaf pre-comp layer to use the pre-comp copy above it as an alpha map. Okay, so in other words, there's leaves and leaves too. We're going to go down to leaves, the leaves layer, which is uh, this one right here. We're going to go over to track mat and we're going to click on the drop down and we're going to say alpha mat leaves two. Now what that does, once again, an alpha mat, uh, you know, creates a transparency so we don't see what's on there and creates like a window. And what happens now is uh, those leaves just kind of appear out of nowhere. So we don't see them and now they appear. Okay. Uh, all right, so next, let's see what's next. All right, scroll down a little bit. Okay, now, uh, so we got the leaves coming out. We got the branches appearing. Now we want to do something with these little gold circles. Okay, so it says select the gold circle pre-comp layer and duplicate it. Rename the copy. All right, so we've done that already, so we can try it again. Uh, we did it with the leaves. So what we want to do is find the gold circle pre-comp down here. Click on it. Do Command-D to copy it. Hit your Return or Enter button and name this uh, pre-comp 2. And hit your Return or Enter button again to, um, to lock that name in. Okay. We've duplicated. We've renamed it. Now, we're on the rename layer. At two seconds, set a rotation keyframe. Okay, so they're going through all this stuff here, you know, scale, rotation, position. Um, okay, so what we want to do, once again, we want to go to two seconds. So we'll click our numbers there and put in 200. Uh, then what we'll do is we'll hit the letter R for rotation, and that will open up our rotation uh, attribute, and we'll click on the stopwatch to the left of rotation. So now that sets, once again, we're working backwards, like I call this backwards animation. We went down to where we want everything to be a certain way. In this case, we want everything to be 100% not rotated. You know, the rotation is just the way it is right now. Then they'll probably have us go back to the beginning uh, of the movie, like we've been doing before, and change the rotation. So what will happen is these gold dots will start out sort of rotated, and then over two seconds, they'll rotate back to this position they're in right now. Okay, so, um, well, actually, I'm sorry, I take that back. It looks like I had to read a little further. It says set a rotation keyframe for tw and set it at 25 degrees. So in other words, this one's gonna be a little different. The, the, uh, gold, uh, the gold circles are gonna, we're gonna rotate them 25% now, 25 degrees, and then they're gonna be like normal, like they are normally right now at zero, so over those two seconds, they're going to rotate 25 degrees. 
So while you're here at this two second mark, come down here to your rotation and you see a zero X plus zero zero where it says zero zero, just put in 25 and hit enter. Now what you should see is you'll see like an extra set of gold dots kind of rotate because remember we've got two pre-comps here. There's a layer below it, below it that has the gold circles in its original position, right? Okay, uh, and I'm thinking they're going to use the same technique where they use the lower uh, layer and, and make it an alpha map pointing to the top one. Let's see what they do. Um, okay, this time it says set the gold circle precomp layer to use the precomp above it as an alpha inverted mat. Okay, that's interesting. So uh, an alpha inverted mat should do the opposite. It should show everything except what is inside of the mat. So let's see what happens here. Um, so we go here, we go down to the gold circle pre-comp one layer, go into the center column, click on the drop down menu, and this time we choose alpha inverted mat gold circle pre-comp two. Okay, now let's see what's different about that over this two seconds. Well, absolutely nothing. So <laughs> maybe we're not quite done yet. Um, Let's see. Select the gold circle pre-comp layer and duplicate it. Rename the copy at two seconds set rotation keyframe for it at 25 degrees. Okay, we did that. Back at the start. Oh, it says back at the start, set the rotation to zero. So that's the part that I missed. Um, okay, so go ahead and, you know, everything we did was good. Uh, but what we have to do now is click on the gold circle pre-comp two layer. Make sure that your uh, make sure that your playback head is at zero is at the beginning. Come down here and change the rotation from 25 to zero at the beginning. Okay, so now you can see what the inverted alpha mat does. Remember, an alpha mat is a window which makes everything transparent except for whatever is revealed in the window. <coughs> An inverted alpha mat does the opposite whatever the alpha mat is, in this case, it's all those gold circles. It makes whatever, whatever the mat is, these gold circles, it makes whatever's behind that invisible. And then everything else is visible, right? So in other words, what happens is we have these gold circles. They're actually sitting right down there right now, but we've got an alpha inverted alpha mat on top of them, hiding them. And so what happens is when the top layer of the gold circle pre-comp two, all it does is over two seconds, it rotates from zero to 25 degrees. And what it's going to look like is it's going to look like these circles are emerging out of nothingness when actually they're emerging from behind the inverted mat, which is hiding them. So if we grab this and we drag it to the right, you can see the circles start to rotate out from behind the, wi the white track mat, which is basically the hidden uh, circles, right? So it gives you kind of an interesting uh, look. It gives you like the look of a turn reveal as opposed to just a sort of a linear slide reveal. Okay, uh, let's go down a little more. Um, all right, now another thing we're going to do. It says with the naturalists text layer selected, create a new solid 400 by 100. Okay, 400 by 100. So we're going to go in here. We're going to click Naturalists. Uh, we're going to do a new layer solid. So layer new solid. For the numbers, I remembered this time. We're going to put them in 400. Hit your tab key, put in 100. Um, you, can, you can leave the name of this blue solid too, and you can leave it a blue color. It's fine. Um, Okay, and there it is, and you see we created the solid and it covered the text, right? Okay, make sure that it covers the text. It says at two seconds, set a position keyframe for the solid. All right, so we've done this before, so this is starting to make sense. So we can click on here, we can go to 200. Uh, we can hit the letter P for position. It's gonna open up our position attribute. We're gonna click on the stopwatch and so at two seconds, we want that blue uh, rectangle to be there. Okay, 
At the start of the timeline, reposition the solid just below the text. Okay, so what we're going to do is go back to After Effects, grab our playback head, drag it back to zero. Then we're going to click on our blue uh, solid there. We're going to click on it and start to drag it down. As soon as we start dragging, we're going to hold down our Shift key. And we're going to move it down so that we reveal the naturalist text. The naturalist text can be seen, right? Now, of course, if we turn this into an alpha mat, I mean, right now, all we have is an animation where this layer solid is basically covering the naturalist, right? But if we turn that into an alpha mat, that becomes a window. It hides everything except whatever's inside of that square. And so as the square moves up, it should reveal the word naturalist, right? So let's see what they want us to do. So it says, set the text layer to use the solid above it as an alpha mat. So that is what we're going to do. So come down here, click on naturalists, that layer right there. Find the center column, which uh, is under the track mat heading. Click on the none drop down and change it to alpha mat blue solid two. Once again, that blue, uh, you know, box disappears. And as you grab your playback head and as everything else is happening, uh, over those two seconds, that box moves up and reveals the word naturalist. Now, yours may happen faster than mine, depending on how far below the word naturalist you, you dragged it. You know, the closer it is, the sooner it's going to start to reveal it. Okay, uh, so next, let's see. It says, now your design will slowly grow into its final form. Play around with the keyframe's positions to adjust the relative speed of each element and make the end result more organic, right? So here they're showing you at 30 seconds, it's starting to reveal, you know, there was some stuff that was there already, like it was revealing the horizontal lines, right? Um, but now we've got it revealing the vertical stems, right? We've got the, uh, the gold uh, circles kind of uh, rotating into place. And we've got the, uh, the naturalist text being revealed. So you can see it at 30 seconds, uh, or, or I should say 30, half a second, uh, one second, one and a half seconds, and two seconds. So now go ahead and check out the whole thing. Uh, just hit your space bar. And you can see over two seconds how that comes in. Now, think about how much work this must have been um, for the people who created this, right? Or the person who created it. You know, we see stuff like this all the time. We see it on, you know, sports channels we see it on the weather weather stations you know uh we see it on the internet we see it on television you know uh really any anything you can imagine that has motion graphics we see stuff like this now this is a pretty cool graphic uh but somebody had to create all those leaves and all those dots somebody had to think of the idea in the first place um they had to sketch everything out they had to create a color palette <laughs> and then once they created all the all the items in in a program like Adobe Illustrator, these vector leaves and, and objects, they had to put it all together and then go through all of these steps to get this motion graphic created. And this whole thing lasts two seconds, right? It just shows you the incredible amount of work that can go into something, you know, that, that passes by so quickly. And this could just be basically an animated logo that just kind of pops up at the beginning of you know a nature series or at the beginning of a internet ad or something like that so it, it kind of gives you a, a good example of of how much work can go into such a simple thing but also how good it can look because it's a nice looking graphic okay so um you can go ahead and save this graphic if you're saving the tutorials in a folder on your computer so you can go back and review them and and use these techniques in your um, future projects then you can save that one. We've got one other uh, tutorial we're going to do. And this one is called Create Grungy Effects. And so if you go back to the class website, you can click on that. And this one's pretty fun. Uh, we're going to take some footage and make it look beat up and add noise to it and stuff like that. Um, OK, so what we're going to do here, um, this is the same kind of tutorial where we just kind of walk through everything we don't have a video so we're gonna uh, click on the get the files and uh, we're gonna 
Uh, it looks like it's going to take a few seconds for that to download. Any questions while we're waiting for that to download? Okay, I guess it went from 30 seconds to one and a half minutes. So uh, it might take a little second for Soon you. It's going to take two days to finish downloading it all. <laughs> two days on yours? Two days on your end. Two days, huh? Two uh, whole days. We're never going to be able to get through this. Is yours downloaded already, Kim? I didn't download it. I like watching through them all. I haven't really worked. I worked through two of them. And then I've just been watching the rest. Okay, got it. But uh, I but, know that feeling. I've had stuff say it would be downloaded in like five seconds and then jump up to three days. And it's just like. Ah. <laughs> You're like, what? What am I going like, to do here? Why? You know, it'd be a cool prank to play on somebody is if you could like come up with some software where you can manipulate that little time thing. And then. You know, even if they downloaded something really simple, like a piece of music or something, you could say, we'll take six years, you know, to download or something. <laughs> yeah. And you can't do anything while you do it or else it'll jump up even more. <laughs> or else somebody will come to your house and punch you. <laughs> uh, okay. You know what? My friends did have something like that, but it was with phone calls where you would get a ring and you can set the duration of each ring, like, for one minute to three minutes to you know every five minutes and it's it you you put the you put the number put the duration and um and then you press send i think it's, it's something type of like i think you did it off the phone i can't remember because i did it in high school uh, a while back ago and you send it and then in about 30 minutes it starts doing it until <laughs> And you give it a timer too. You can do it for an hour or all day and stuff like that. Yeah. That's pretty. Yeah. That's pretty fun. That's a good way to lose friends. <laughs> okay. No, no, no. Real friends will do it right back to you. Yeah, that's true. Uh, okay, so mine finally downloaded. It's in a folder called Gr Grunge Effects. Um, I think it must be because it has some video in it or something, which is why it's big. Uh, okay, so there's a folder called Grunge Effects. Uh, double click on that grunge effects um, after effects file okay and so you know what you'll see when you open this up you'll see this sort of bizarre looks like a close-up on somebody's rug or something like that much of sort of creepy noise there okay so let's see what they want us to do um, says, give your footage a beat up distress look using the turbulent noise effect in Adobe After Effects. Okay, turbulent noise is a powerful, versatile effect. Whether generating digital blocky textures or smooth organic clouds, you can use it to lend your footage a grungy look. Find it by typing turbulent noise into the effects and presets panel and dragging the effect to the layer in your composition. Explore some pre-built textures in our sample project file by opening the comps in the Turbulent Noise Samples folder and pressing UU on the keyboard to see what settings we modified to achieve these looks. Okay, and then uh, at the top, it tells you um, some more things that you can do. Let's see. Um, to generate cloud-like splotchy noise, create a new composition, add a solid layer, and apply the Turbulent Noise effect to it. Okay, so let's let's go back up to the top and see. Let's just do all this uh, stuff in the order that they want us to do it in. So it says um, first we got to start by finding turbulent noise. Okay, so let's go up here. Uh, let's see now the setting that I have here. It looks like I'm still in the well. I'm in the standard library here, and I don't really see my uh, my normal uh, choices over here. So let me see if if I click on default, what I get. Oh yeah, maybe try clicking on default up here in your uh, interface settings, your window workspace settings, and now you'll see effects and presets. And then you can go to turbulent noise, and there it is, there's the turbulent noise. Okay, so, Drag the effect to the layer in your composition. 
Okay. So let's see. Oh, it looks like, well, see, it looks like turbulent noise is already on there. So I'm not really sure what they're asking us to do. Uh, la, 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 la. Let me, let me, let me scroll down through this a little bit and see what, it, what they want us to do. Okay. They're just telling us different, different ways to affect this turbulent noise. Let's see. Um, let's see. Dragging it to the, and dragging the effect to the layer in your composition. Explore some pre-built textures in our sample project file by opening the comps in the turbulent noise samples folder and pressing UU on the keyboard to see what settings we modified to achieve those looks. Okay, um, composition add a small layer. Okay, so let's see what their what examples they have for us real quick. Um, so okay, we got something called turbulent noise samples. So uh okay here we go if you double click on this thing called turbulent noise samples and then you double click on each one of these samples in here they have all of these options for you that you can add to your library right like one of them is clouds uh here's one that's called combo organic here's one called noisy grain right so take a second and just double click in these to see um, you know, the different options that are available to you. Okay. And you can, you know, you can save this composition, uh, or this project and then just use these as you like. Um, okay. Now, after you've explored those a little bit, uh, double click on grungy video, uh, start right now they already have turbulent noise in here and they've got a setting for it. So we don't, we don't really need to drag it on there. So I don't think we're going to drag it on. Um, okay, now it says to, to generate cloud-like splotchy noise, create a new composition, add a solid, and apply the turbulent noise effect to it. Okay, um, let's see. So let's create a brand new composition. Uh, so we'll go here into Adobe After Effects, and we'll click down here on this little icon here to create a new composition. And we'll call this like a uh, sample and we'll just hit okay. So it's just gonna create a comp, a brand new blank comp, right? All right, so we'll create a new composition. Uh, add a layer solid, layer new solid. Okay, so we're gonna go in here. This is how you make turbulent noise from scratch. So we're gonna go layer new solid. Doesn't really matter what color it is, but uh, let's go ahead and make it black just for grins. So click on this color chip or actually, you know what? Let's make it white. Uh, make it white. Hit OK here and then OK here. I want to see what happens when we make it white. Um, OK. So uh, now it says apply the turbulent noise effects to it. All right. So now we're going to grab turbulent noise this option right here and drag it on top of this layer okay now you'll see that when you start with a light layer like that like white it gives you sort of a lighter turbulent noises than if you uh, started with a dark layer okay so we grab the turbulent noise we drag it on, on top of the white layer um, now it says <clears throat> expand the effects in the solid layer to see the turbulent noise options okay so over here where it says white solid, click on your disclosure triangle, then open up effects, then open up turbulent noise. Now these are all the different choices you can have with turbulent noise. Um, all right. Uh, now it says set fractal type to turbulent smooth. All right, fractal type, this one, first one, set to basic. So change it to turbulent smooth and watch how your uh, screen changes when you do that. Okay, so everything got a lot darker for one thing. Um, okay, next, um, set noise type to spline. Okay, let's try that. So locate noise type, the second one, and change it to spline. Okay, gets a little more definite definition in it there. And change the contrast settings. Okay, so they just want us to change the contest, contrast settings to something that we like. 
So right here where you've got contrast, you can click on that number 100. And if you drag it to the right, everything's gonna get lighter. And if you drag it to the left, everything's gonna get darker. So find a, a contrast setting that you like, you know, whether it's darker or lighter. Okay, so we adjusted the contrast settings. Now, it says animate the effect randomly and quickly by setting a keyframe for evolution optics random seed to zero at the start of your composition. Okay, so we want to set a keyframe for evolution optics random seed to zero. Evolution optics random seed. Okay, evolution optics is right here. If we open that up, we've got random seed, right? And it's set to zero. So click your stopwatch to the left of the word random seed under evolution optics. Now they're telling us if we really want to make this change, set it to a very high value, at least 1000 at the end of the composition. So now uh, take your playback head and drag it all the way down to the end of your composition. Come down here to where random seed says zero and change it to 1000 and hit enter. And you should see your, your composition change a lot, right? Now, let's see what that looks like. Um, if you drag your playback head back to the beginning and hit, you, hit your space bar, this is what turbulent noise is. So really, turbulent noise is just this visual dirt. But because we're in Adobe After Effects as opposed to a program like Photoshop, in Photoshop, you know, you can put dirt or grain on an image and it'll, it'll make it look old and, and dirty and grainy. But here you can actually have that dirt and that grain move, which creates a whole new uh, different kind of look. All right, so this is us creating a turbulent noise from scratch. All right, so let's go down and see what they want us to do next. Okay, now it says to create a blocky digital texture, add turbulent noise to a new solid layer. Okay, so we're gonna, we're gonna do what we just did again. So we're gonna go in here. You can close up all these layers here um, so that you've got your white solid there, right? Now let's add a, a new solid. So we'll go layer, new, solid. You can leave this one white again if you like or change its color to see how, how it looks different and hit okay. Now go ahead and grab your turbulent noise again over here and drag it on top of this new white layer. Okay, once again, we're starting out with the same base that we had before. Um, okay, this time set fractal type to rocky. All right, so we're going to set the fractal type to rocky. So we're going to go down here. We're going to open white solid layer three. We're going to open effects. We're going to open turbulent noise. And for fractal type, we're going to set it to rocky. Okay, that gives you a very different look. Um, then we're going to go in here and we're going to set the noise type to block. Okay, so noise type block. Wow, very different kind of look, right? Okay, um, now it says play with the other uh, parameters to achieve something you like. Set various keyframes along the timeline for evolution. A key parameter that brings a natural progressive movement to the texture. Okay, so what the heck, let's give that a shot. So down here under evolution, uh, well, it says evolution options, and then there's evolution. So I'm not quite sure what they're suggesting, but let's give it a shot. We got nothing to lose by experimenting, right? So we can click uh, to the left of the word evolution, and it looks like evolution is some sort of rotation thing. So we'll leave everything at zero and then move up to like, I don't know, let's say four seconds uh, here, and then just click on this uh, number here this first number, which is zero, and move it to the right a little bit. Uh, so now I've got the number eight showing up, right? And now I'm going to grab this and move it down to like eight seconds. And I'll grab this number and uh, I'm going to move it down to a negative number, like negative 10. I'm just playing around. Now I'm going to go to 12 seconds. I'm going to click on this number again and I'm going to move it up to like 24, right? So that's a bunch of weird you know, back and forth rotation that thing's doing. So, um, you know, you can grab your playback head, bring it back to the beginning, hit your space bar. Look at all that weird stuff that's happening. Uh, 
you know, partially due to the evolution keyframes we just put in there. So that's one of the fun things about After Effects is you can just play around with it and come up with these cool effects, um, you know, that, that, that you had no idea you were going to make, but maybe they'll be cool and useful. Okay, so let's see what's next. Um, now it says, let's see, if you change the keyframes to hold frames, animation, toggle, hold frames, you'll see the effect stutter uh, rather than progress smoothly. So they want us to go animation, toggle, hold, keyframe. Okay, let's try that. Uh, okay. So animation, toggle, hold, keyframe. Oh, I see. You have to select everything though. Um, so let me, so what you can do is take your mouse and click and drag a marquee to select all four of those um, keyframes and then go animation, toggle, hold, keyframe. All four of them will change to little weird uh, triangle icons with little square backs. And now, uh, hit play again. Whoa, and now nothing's happening. Oh, okay. Now it's doing a stutter, which means instead of a smooth animation, it's just switching from one to the next. Okay, that could be cool. Um, it's not as fun as the other one, but you know, maybe there was a time and a place for it, right? All right. Uh, and so of course we could undo that if we wanted it to be cooler, like the last one, just do command Z or control Z. Okay, now we're gonna make a very dirty turbulent noise. And then I believe we're going to add that to some video. So we're gonna do this one more time. So we're gonna make a new solid layer, just like we've been doing. So uh, layer, new, solid, just hit OK. Go ahead and close up that other layer. So now we're working with the top layer. We're going to click on turbulent noise again, drag it on top of there. It just gives us that base for doing things. OK, now we're going to open all the disclosure triangles and set the fractal type to threads. OK, so open uh, white solid, open effects, open tur turbulent noise, set fractal type to threads, which is the bottom most one. Wow, that, that really looks like somebody's carpet. Um, OK, next we're going to set the noise type to linear. OK, so noise type is right underneath that. We're going to set that to linear. OK, that's cool. OK. Uh, la, 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 noise and increase contrast. Okay, so now we're going to click on, we're going to find the word contrast. We're going to find the 100 blue 100. Click on it and drag it to the right a bit to increase the contrast, make the white more white and the dark more dark. Okay, now give the effect a rolling film damage look by setting keyframes for transform offset turbulence. One on the one on the first and one on the last frame of the comp. Okay, uh, and then altering the y value from one extreme to another at least negative seven thousand to seven thousand. Okay, so uh, first let's find uh, transform offset turbulence. Okay, so here's transform. You got to open that up, and you got to find offset turbulence, which is these this number right here, six forty three sixty. Right? Okay, or you know. Now grab that and drag it down to the beginning of your timeline and click on the stopwatch to the left of offset turbulence, right? Now grab your playback head and drag it to the end of the timeline. Click on these numbers, first the 640, and drag that, you know, one direction. Then click on the 360 and drag that another direction, okay? So in other words, we're making it so that the... Uh, this whole turbulence is now positioned differently at the beginning than it is at the end. So that means that the whole, all of the turbulence is doing its own kind of movement, right? In addition to whatever kind of movement is happening in there. Now, the other thing they want us to change, they want us to find the Y value and alter it from negative 7,000 to 7,000. All right, the Y value. Oh, okay, X and Y. So it's those two numbers there. So, uh, wow. So I just moved mine a little bit. They want us to move it a lot. So let's do this. Click on the second number 
uh, grab your playback head and drag it back to the beginning of the timeline. Click on the second number, which is probably 360. Put in negative 7000, so negative 7000, right? Then grab your playback head, drag it to the end of the timeline. Click on that second number and now put in positive 7000, so 7000 and hit enter. Okay, so that first number, we didn't change it very much. It, it just moved a little bit. We won't worry about that. Um, okay, let's see what else they want us to do. Uh, play around with the order of your turbulent noise layers to see how the effects change. Okay, so now let's grab this playback head, drag it back to the beginning and hit the play button. Okay, so by changing the Y value, which of course is up and down, we've made it so that the noise is kind of, it's doing this movement which makes it looks like it's continually scrolling uh, along the Y parameter, right? Now, the good thing about that is it kind of looks like a film or like, you know, when you're, when you're watching the old 24 millimeter films, you know, that are going through one frame at a time, if there was any dirt or noise on them, it would be going, it would be traveling along with the film. So we've got that kind of effect. Of course, if you did the same thing to the X parameter, you could, you know, move it, move it along the horizon. Um, okay, let's see what else they want us to do. Okay, now they want you to play around. You guys can do this on your own if you want. They, they, they're saying you can move the layers, you know, because, uh, you know, we've got multiple layers here now, right? So, um, you know, you can close up all your layers if you like. You can grab uh, the bottom layer and move it up to the top and see how that looks. You can grab uh, that and move it down to the bottom, see how that looks. But what I would recommend is that if you do play around with this a little bit, uh, hit your Command Z key and make sure you go back to where this last one that we did is on the top. So that's called White Solid 4, and that's the one where the thing is moving uh, down, it's scrolling down along the X parameter. Okay, now that we've got that, we can uh, work with the final steps here, which are the video. Okay, so we're going to scroll down. It says, now that you've got an interesting grunge look, Apply it to some footage by dragging a clip to the bottom of the timeline. Okay, so what we're going to do is go into After Effects. Uh, over here, we're seeing our effects, but if we click on the double-headed arrow, we can go to back to our project, right? And uh, let's see. So now what we have to do is, let's see. I did all that on the sample. Uh, so now we can go back to, let's see, grungy video start. Okay, so uh, if you, you guys can choose how you wanna do this. Um, you can either double click on grungy video start and go back to their original uh, look, which is this, or if you like what you've achieved on the sample layer, you can stay on that layer. It's really up to you guys, right? I'm going to go back to grungy video start and double click on that. So I've got this, you know, this look. Now I'm going to open up footage and uh, I'm going to close up my layers here and I'm going to grab the footage, which is called skateboarder and I'm going to drag it down underneath my um, black solid one layer. Okay. So in other words, we've got video of a skateboarder down there but we also have the turbulent noise layer on top of it. And one of the hallmarks of turbulent noise is that it's, in this case, it's being added. You can see right here, it says mode add, right? Um, so it's being added to the uh, footage below it. So now we get both. Okay, um, so let's go back here to the tutorial. Now it says, Play around with various blending modes of the turbulent noise layers, especially add, darken, multiply, and overlay to see how the combined effects impact the scene. So add, darken, multiply, and overlay. And once again, these are the same as Photoshop. So first of all, we have add, and you can see how that looks, right? Try changing the mode to multiply. Okay, and of course that makes everything much darker because it adds both of them in. Uh, then try changing it to, I believe, darken was the third one. Was it darken? Yeah, uh, an overlay, right? Okay, so now you can try darken. That makes everything really dark. 
And then finally, overlay, 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 overlay here. Now, overlay is kind of nice because overlay makes the noise more subtle and brings through more of the video, right? Uh, another one that I like is soft light. Uh, I use soft light a lot in Photoshop. And what's cool about soft light is you see probably some of the most of the video in here, and it's just a little bit of dirt making you feel like maybe this film got left in the canister for 20 years, or maybe the sun got to it or whatever. So, um, okay, let's see what else they want us to do here. Uh, it says, adding a filmic texture layer, dirty film and scratches, on top of the turbulent noise layers and adjusting its blend mode and transparency can improve the distressed film look you're after. Uh, con consider applying some color adjustments and a subtle vignette to your footage using the Lumetri color effect. Okay, so um, adding a filmic layer, dirty film and scratches um, on top of the turbulent noise. Okay, so... Um, here we have a brand new piece of footage called Dirty Dirt and Scratches. Now grab that and drag it down and put it on top of uh, both layers. Let's see. Dirty Dirt and Scratches. Um, now, uh, when you put it in on the top, it only shows that video. And you can see what that video is. It's all this kind of film junk, right? But now you can go into mode and click on the drop down menu and you can start by using add. Okay. Once again, experiment with the different uh, options, right? So try add, see how that looks. Try multiply. Uh, try overlay. I like overlay. Uh, try darken. Oh, uh, darken's pretty weird. And then try something like soft light. Let's see. Okay, let me try overlay because I like the way that looked. Uh, overlay. Okay, and then you can hit play. Uh, my computer's running kind of slow now, so it's got to poke, poke its way through the first pass in order to render it, and then it'll come back and play it again. But you can see how cool these film, film and scratches look. Okay, once it's done, it should uh, should get faster on the second run through now. Yeah, there we go. So now that it's rendered, you can see uh, it's applying the film and scratches. Now, we can stop it with our playback head. Now, they're, they're suggesting a couple of um, special effects that you can do to it. So uh, let's go look what they're saying. They're saying uh, use the Lumetri color effect uh, and... Okay, so let's see uh, what that's going to look like. So what we'll do is we'll go over here to Effects and Presets, clear it out, and uh, type in Lumetri, L-U-M-E-T-R-I. Okay, you're going to get this thing called Lumetri Color. Click on that and drag it onto your uh, composition here. And then, um, you know, you'd have to go over here and open up uh, some of these different options here. Um, let's open up vignette uh, down at the bottom. Open up vignette, and then uh, you know make sure that your playback head is at the very beginning of your timeline. And then let's see. Uh, we're just going to experiment here. So we're going to click on the zero, and we're going to drag it towards the left. Nothing, nothing good happens. But here's the cool thing. When you drag the vignette to the, I'm sorry, when you drag it to the right, things just get lighter and that's no good. When you drag it to the left, notice what happens. This shadow starts creeping in from the corners. And that is, um, that is exactly what you want. Uh, it is the, uh, the vignette effect is where you have darkness on the corners. So the more you click on this and grab it and drag it to the left, the more of a vignette effect that you get, right? So you can give yourself a, a vignette in fact, effect. Uh, once again, you have to click on each one of these and experiment with them. So click on the midpoint, drag that to the right and the left. You know, you can see sort of how much of an effect you want. You know, 
there's like an oval that's being created in the center with the dark around it. Uh, you can change the roundness of that oval uh, by this little slider here. Uh, let me set that back to zero. Um, and then you can feather the effects of the vignette, right? Um, now there's a whole bunch of other choices in here. Uh, there's color wheels. Oh, look at all that crazy stuff. Curves. Insane. Insane. You can go insane with this stuff. Uh, you know, all kinds of changes you can make. Um, let's see. Basic correction. Wow. It's just kind of, it's almost too much information, right? Um, let's see what's under creative. Intensity, look, adjustment. Yeah. So there's, there's basically, you could spend your whole life in this one effect, right? Just trying to get it to look the way you want. Uh, so just make a couple changes, play with it. Uh, you know, no harm, no foul, no risk, no reward kind of thing. Um, just see what you can experiment with and come up with. That's one of the fun things about using these creative tools is it's all about your artistry and your imagination. Um, and then when you're all done, you know, uh, you can play it. In my case, my computer's being kind of pokey. Oh, and I see why. Um, it's because it's rendering it full right here. If you want your computer to go faster, click on this and change it to a quarter. And then uh, then notice when I hit my play button, how much faster everything's moving. Full will render it at the full resolution it's finally going to play at, whereas quarter will render it at a quarter of that resolution. It'll look a little poopier, but everything moves faster, so that makes me happier, right? So now we've got some cool stuff. We've got the original footage. We've got the turbulent noise. We've got the dirt and scratches. And we've got the vignette effect. Very, very cool. You can just imagine adding music to something like this and, and you know, having a very cool uh, video happening. Um, okay, now, and then uh, finally, let's go ahead and take a look at what they achieved. This is them with all their After Effects know-how. Uh, creating a cool looking version of this video. Let's see. Okay. So cool stuff, right? Um, all right. So go ahead and save that image, or I'm sorry, that, that, that file, After Effects file. Uh, uh, I think this would be a good one to save. Um, it's got all of those libraries of the grunge effects. And uh, you can look at those and preview them and figure out which ones you want to use uh, for your projects. So, and plus it's got that dirt and scratches video, which is really cool as well. Okay, uh, so I'm gonna give you guys some time now to work on project two, which is due a week from today. Um, like I said, you know, if you haven't create, finished an animatic yet, uh, that might be the first step you want to take, uh, then you could, potentially show that to us on Monday, we could give you some feedback and then you could, uh, you know, just polish it up to be your final video. So why don't you guys work on uh, project two? Uh, any questions before I let you guys get to work? Not related to After Effects, but <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, well, all right. <laughs> well, let me, let me get you guys. Do you have a question for me that's not related to After Effects or is it just, uh, you have no, no uh, it's, <laughs> it's a, another just kind of question okay got it fair enough fair enough our cartoony dead bodies okay yeah yeah i'm gonna download Sweet. a game but i got a, a downgrade uh catalina from mojave and it's <laughs> it sucks oh that does suck oh my god um okay well uh all right so why don't you guys go ahead and work on your stuff i'll check back in with you a little later i'm going to turn my video feed off but my audio will be on if you have a question just pop in and ask it all right, thank you. Okay.